Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners, welcome to this biology lesson. My name is Stephen Kariungi. Today we are discussing the topic cell physiology and this is a continuation from what we did during the last lesson. So last lesson we introduced the topic and we also discussed the structure and properties of cell membrane. Today, we shall continue looking at the physiological processes that are used during the study of cell physiology. So, these physiological processes are the processes that allow these are the processes that allow movement of substances across the cell membrane. So they are the processes that allow the movement of substances across the cell membrane. Now, which are these processes? They include, one, we have diffusion, we have osmosis, and we have active transport. So those are the three physiological processes that are responsible for the movement of substances across the cell membrane. So we will start with the first uh, process, and this is diffusion. Now, we want to ask ourselves, what does the word diffusion mean? Now, diffusion is the movement of particles from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. So we are talking about the movement of particles from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration until an equilibrium is established, until the two regions are balanced, until they have the same concentration. So in this case, we can say that this is the movement of particles from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration until an equilibrium, an equilibrium is a balance, until an equilibrium is achieved. So for example, if I have a gas here that has a very strong smell, and then I release it, it will spread throughout the room. So the spreading out of those gas particles is by diffusion. So we will say that those particles have diffused until such a time that the entire room gets those particles. And you can be able now to get the, the smell of that particular gas. Now, I want us to look at uh, what are some of the experiments that one can carry out to demonstrate diffusion. One of the experiments that we can use to demonstrate diffusion, we can have a beaker
And then inside that beaker, uh, using a straw, we introduce a crystal. We introduce a crystal and then we put some water into the beaker. So we have water. We have a beaker and then we have a crystal. Let's take, for example, a crystal of potassium manganate 7. So this is a, this is a straw. Is the beaker. We put some water. And then we have a crystal of potassium manganate. Seven. So that is what we have at the beginning. So once we have introduced the crystal, we remove the straw so that the crystal is left at the bottom of the beaker that contains water. And then we leave it for a few hours, let's say like four hours. Now after four hours, this is what we shall observe. So we shall observe that the entire solution becomes purple. So we have a purple solution. So this is B at the end. At the end of four hours, we have the beaker and the rest. So we are saying what has happened is the crystal of potassium manganate 7 has diffused within the water slowly by slowly until the entire water is covered by potassium manganate 7. So the entire solution will turn purple. So you can say entire solution becomes purple. Okay, this is a purple solution in entire. Uh, in entire. So the next thing that we are going to look at, what are the observations? How can we state those observations? So we are saying that after four hours, the entire solution becomes purple. So at the beginning, the water was colorless. Then we introduced the crystal, or just one crystal of potassium manganate 7. Then we remove the straw. We allow the crystal now to diffuse within the water. Until at the end, we find that the entire solution is now purple. Now, what is the reason for that? So now we look at the conclusion. So how to explain that? We shall say that the crystal of potassium manganate 7 diffused through water. Until the entire solution turns purple. So what we can say 
is that diffusion has actually taken place. So in this case, we are saying that uh, the region of high concentration is the potassium manganate 7 crystal. Then it is spreads out to the entire solution. So that is diffusion. So there are so many experiments that you can use. And like I said earlier, someone can come with a, a gas that has a very strong smell and open it in the room. And everyone who is in that room gets the smell of that particular gas. That is because there is actually diffusion that has taken place. So we started by mentioning the three physiological processes, diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. Then we went on to define diffusion as the movement of particles from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration until an equilibrium is achieved. An equilibrium, I said, is a balance until a balance is achieved, like we can see here. Then we have seen an experiment that we can carry out to demonstrate diffusion. We introduce a crystal of potassium manganate 7 uh, using a straw, then we leave it there. After four hours, we come and observe, and you'll find that the entire solution will have turned purple to show that there is actually diffusion. So the observations are as follows, and then also the conclusion. So we'll stop there and then have the assignment for the day. So the assignment is as indicated there. The first question, define the term diffusion. The second question, describe an experiment to investigate diffusion. And number three, state the observations in the experiment two above. In experiment number two, what are the observations that you'll make in that particular experiment? So we'll stop there for today and goodbye.